Hello everyone, I'm Melanie with Painting Crafty and today I'm going to walk you step by step of how to create this cute little bouquet of doodle flowers stuffed inside of a sweet little pouring picture with a sweet little bird on the front. I'm going to walk you through the drawing steps and then I'm going to show you an easy watercolor technique at the end. Some of the materials I'm going to be using today are the Canson watercolor paper, 140 pound. It's considered a student grade, which means it's reasonably priced. I'm going to be using a micron pen, a number zero one to do my doodling and a little bit of the uniball pen. This is another great white pen to be able Able to do a, a little bit of doodling there as well. I'm using just a regular mechanical pencil today. And number two, I have two erasers that I really like to use when I'm doing my drawing is this high polymer Pentel eraser to do all of the big erasing my straight lines. And then I also like to have a gum eraser to be able to pick up a little bit of the graphite to lighten my drawing at the end. Now the watercolor brushes I'm using are the Velvet Touch Princeton brand number six to up to number 10. I usually paint small. The six by six is normally the size that I draw on. So I don't need anything any bigger than that. And of course, some water. I always have a paper towel sitting across when I do my watercolor part uh, to be able to dab my brush, to check my colors and to control the water a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get started on the drawing process. I'm gonna turn, make me small and the picture big and let's start this together. So I have my lines drawn out here that I just do an X across my paper. This just helps me teach you about how kind of proportionally wise, how big I'm drawing it. Now it doesn't really matter. If you have are using a different size of paper, just draw it the shapes and you're gonna be able to create this little lovely piece. And it doesn't mean, you don't have to use watercolor either because once you have it drawn, you can use any art medium you wanted to, to color it in. Well, let's start with our, our pouring picture first. So if we look at this shape here, it has a little tiny bit of a curve, kind of if you think like a little waistline on the inside. So I'm gonna start here. One thing I wanna plan when I'm drawing this is I'm leaving enough space for wherever the top of your paper might be. So for your flowers, and then at the bottom, I'm gonna have some sort of little table line there to hold my pouring picture on. So I'm gonna take a look. I know I'm starting here. Here's up about maybe about an inch or so is where I'm gonna start the top. So I'm gonna take a look here. Let's slide this down so maybe you can see a little bit more. I'm gonna come up here about an inch and then look there. I'm gonna make a tick mark there so I have an idea of where I wanna start. I'm gonna come down here and take a look as well. I'm gonna put another tick mark. I knew I stopped right around in that area. That's maybe about a half an inch from my bottom. So at least I have the top and the bottom area. Now let's come across. I'm going to have to have a little bit of room to be able to put that pouring picture handle on there. So I'm going to need more room on that side, less room on this side. So I'm gonna stop there. I can bring it out just a little further on this side I have nothing on that side of my paper. Now let's go ahead and create that curve. This does have a little bit of a lip on it. So to do that pouring picture look, I'm gonna come in back a little bit more and then curve it back out. Now I like to do a little sketch motion with my hand when I'm doing my pencil. That way it doesn't lock me in so tightly to my line and I have a better chance of maybe getting a better line quality or where I want to end up with my drawing if I just do that motion. Now I'm gonna come here and come in right away so I don't have that lip mark there. I'm gonna come in to this side and then come over like so. Now I can kind of tell my picture is probably a little too narrow. Let's make it a little wider. I'm gonna come in with my big eraser to erase this line. I wanna be able to get my bird in there and I wanna be able to have that part. Oh, this has a twisting eraser on it. It's a new pencil I'm trying out and I'm not 100% sure I like these pencils but it's what I got today. So I'm gonna come over a little bit more, make this a little bit wider so I have plenty of room to make my bird. Okay, so there we have it. Now let's create that gentle smile face at the bottom. By adding, adding that contour line at the bottom, it's going to give your drawing a feeling of like it's moving around instead of just being flat. I'm gonna take my little dust eraser, sweep up those lines a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Now you can take a look at your negative space, which means this space over here. Do you have enough room to be able to put your pouring picture handle on there? I think I do. So let's go ahead and pop that in. I'm gonna come up a little higher than the top here, curve it out, kind of like an ear. If you think about an ear, if you were drawing an ear on the something, 
come back in. Now I'm just gonna duplicate that shape again, coming around and in. Now you have, after you have it drawn, take a look. Does it look too big? Mine might look a little too big, actually. I'm thinking I'm gonna move it in a little bit. It looked a little too wide for my picture. So a good way to check yours too. Now I can look up in my camera and take a look at what I've drawn, but you could hold your picture up in front of you and um, take a look that way. We often just look at our things flat and they're gonna look completely different when we hold them up. So maybe hold them up and take a look to see if that proportions look right. Yes, I like that a lot better. I think that's great. I think I'm gonna stop right there. Now I'm gonna take a look at how I drew my bird and this can be any way um, you decide you wanna draw yours, but the shape that I'm going for is this check mark or this V shape. It's just a gradual shape here of V. It's got a little bit of a rounded head here and then this rounded shape here. So I'm not coming to a point, but I still have that V shape. So that's what I'm gonna be creating when I create my bird. Now I'm gonna go ahead and erase this line out of here because I really don't need it to be able to draw what I want to. I'm just gonna erase that out. Whoops, a little slippery in there today. <laughs> Take my erase, my um, vacuum, clean up that spot so I can be able to see what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna look that here is the top of my V shape or my head that I'm going. Now I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna drop it down towards to make my V and then come back up or that check mark shape. Okay, that looks good. And then back down again and copy my shape down, gonna scoot up and then my tail is going to come there. I'm gonna give them some tail feathers of just some loop like an M shape there. I'm gonna add a wing here, which is going to be a sideways U with a few little feathers here like that. I'm gonna give him a collar of where my color separation is gonna be. So I'm just gonna pop that in and let's work on that beak before we do the eyes. So the beak is going to be open. So I'm going to start with a V. Now this one is going to be sharp. So I'm gonna come down and up like that, just making a small V. And then I'm gonna come back down more like straightish here, coming back down into the mouth. Now, I've just created an open beak. Now to do his eye, I'm gonna look where my beak is open here. I'm gonna draw a straight, really light line. My eye is going to sit right on the top of that line. I'm gonna draw a little circle. The eye is going to be closer to the beak and not, um, not so far away. So that would be the white part of my eye. I'm gonna come in and draw a darker area for my circle and then try to remember to leave a little catch light in there, which means it's a white spot. Now I can go ahead and erase that little line right there. We have him all done. Let's go ahead and pop. He's got some little crazy feathers on the top. This is just a fun little detail to add to whimsical birds. I like that look. So let's go ahead and put his little feet on. So his feet look cute if you can kind of have one kicking out, one a little different direction. So I'm gonna start here, kick this one out this direction. I'm just gonna pop in three toes. <laughs> I don't put a lot of effort into the feet. And then I'm gonna go straight down kind of this way and do another little three toes. So there we have it. Now I'm gonna come up and do a paw or a line here where I have a spot where I can change my colors. I'm gonna follow the same contour that I did here. So I want that smile face drop in just like that. Now we're gonna have a little bit of leaf work down at the bottom if you wanna include that. I'm gonna make it look like he's standing on those little sticks and my sticks have leaves that are coming off of them. Now you can go up into the other area, add your color, whatever might make sense to your drawing. And I'm just popping in a real simple leaf, um, either a football shape, I call it, where there's a point at one end and a point at the other, and then just a little rounded, or you can make them loops too. It doesn't really matter what kind of little shapes you put in there. All right, we have our little guy drawn. Let's put in a table line where we think we might want a table. I'm gonna put it here just so it's not the same line as the one I drew across. So down here, put your pencil down where you might touch up again. And there we have it. We have our little line grown, drawn. I'm gonna erase this one, because I know I don't need that. Come over here and erase my others. And I'm gonna erase this high, this um, one as well. Now for my flowers, I'm not really gonna draw a whole lot in there. Uh, because I'm going to be doing that doodle flower look where we're going to have just more informal 
type of uh, lines. So I'm not gonna have a lot of extra drawn items in top of there. I gotta work a little bit on getting that one more erased. I have a heavy hand when I draw. I also have to draw a little bit darker so you can see it. Okay, there we got it. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna draw a few of these elements in, but not a ton. I'm just gonna draw lightly where I think I want my big center flowers. So my big center flowers are right there. So I'm gonna put those off kind of, I'm gonna put them off here to the little side. I'm gonna do a half flower here. Part of it is in, part of it's out. One over here that's budding up. So it's still gonna be behind. So I'm gonna leave that shape there. And then my top one is going to be sitting right like that. There we go. That's about all I need for my drawing because I'm going to be popping in the color and letting the watercolor do its own little magic. And even if you're using another art medium, you just want to put in your simple shape so then you're ready to paint if you like to paint that way. Now I'm just going to pop in a few big leaves here. These are that football shape, a point, a point, and a belly in the middle. I know I want to drape some off to the side, so I'm just going to have a few. These are kind of that loopy leaf. I do want to add a few of those little um, daisies or aster-like flowers. And so let's see where I will put one there. Just do a little loopy leaf like that for my flower. A little center, maybe it has a little one. I'm going to put one over here in the front of it like that, just so I remember, I want to put that flower there. I'm gonna pop in some leaves here too, cause I know I want some that are coming over into my pouring picture. So I wanna pop those in so I remember them and I don't forget to not put them in there. Let's put another big leaf here. And then these are all gonna be tall little doodle flowers. So I don't have to put a lot of work in there. All right, let's go ahead and start our watercolor process. So today I'm gonna to start with um, my flowers up on top. Now with watercolor, if you're new to watercolor, you definitely wanna make a color card of uh, what colors you're using. I'm using the Rubens set today. It's kind of a medium priced watercolor, but they look so different in the, in the pans than they do on your paper. So you always wanna make a color chart so you have an idea of what your colors are gonna look like on your paper. Now when you're doing watercolor, you always start light and then work your way dark. So I'm gonna be starting with my flowers on the top. I'm gonna to start with a red color here. I'm going to be mixing to tea consistency, which basically means you're gonna have more water, less pigment. So I'm gonna start with kind of a brighter red. I'm gonna have an orange here. So I'm gonna mix that up as well. I did spray these with a little bit of water. So they're kind of a little bit more wet and ready to go. I'm gonna put in some of this purple color just so I have it ready to go on my little palette. This is a super sweet little palette. Uh, it's nice because it's white, it's ceramic. White helps, I can see what my colors are already gonna look like because of what they're gonna look like on my paper because it's similar to having a white paper. We're gonna pop in this lovely shade of green here. Okay, and I think that might get me started of where I want to go with what I want to do. My color's popping out. I'm going to try to put that in there. All right, so let's start with that, um, those big poppy flowers up here. I'm going to take a little bit of this bright orange first. It's watered down fairly well, and I'm just going to pop that color in. So I'm going to pop that color in. My brush wasn't quite rinsed out well enough. Okay, let's pop that color in there. Um, you could also lighten your lines with your pencil if you want to use your gum eraser. You could lighten up some of your pencil marks, which I might need to do down here. And we're going to pop this color in too. I'm going to let that dry. Well, I'll back it up. I'm not going to let it dry. I'm going to pick up my red and then I'm going to tap that in there just a little bit here and there. And I'm going to let those colors mix a blend on blend, a wet on wet and make it, let it do its a little bit of watercolor dance inside of there. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead and pick up some clean water. And I'm gonna work on these little doodle flowers here. So I'm gonna come in with just clean water and I'm gonna make some roundish circles and I'm gonna pop some color on those roundish cir circles that I'm creating and create a little bit of a watercolor doodle flower. I'm just gonna tap that there and the color will stay wherever that water is because watercolor always wants to float. 
wherever the water is. So it's going to stay in that circle and it's not just going to bleed all the way out. So I'm going to come there. Now, if you get too much color and you think, oh, I need to really kind of pop back a little bit, wash your brush out, give it a squeeze in your paper towel, go ahead and touch your spots and pick up a little bit of that color. So you can take a thirsty brush and kind of pick up some of that color. Now, I think I'm going to want to add a little bit of the purple one in there too. So I'm going to pop in some a little bit more water. I'm okay if these colors mix because they're very similar in the same color family. So it won't matter if those colors mix together and create a new color, that will be fine. I'm just looking to do a little bit of doodling. Okay, so here we're gonna pop in some more. So let's add some water here, little roundish dots. I'm gonna pick up my violet purple and I'm gonna pop that color in to those spots and see what I come up with. I'm gonna rinse this out, give it a little bit of a tap, pick up some of my water and my color to see where I'm at. Well, that's a good start. Now I'm gonna work on a little bit of that green. I'm okay if some of my colors mix together. So if a little bit of that purple colors pull into my green, I'm just gonna count that as a bonus and not worry about it too much. So I'm gonna pop some of that color in and start on my green. Now this will be the first layer and uh, usually with watercolor, you always you do your lights first and then work your way dark. So often there's a medium, a light, a medium and a dark color that I'm using. Now, since I have some down here, I'm gonna pop that green in too. Maybe I'll lighten that green up just a little bit by adding a little bit of brighter green to it. I'm gonna add a little bit more bright green to some of these other ones so I have a difference in my greens. So let's choose a color that's in this color family here to do those bright greens. I'm gonna mix that off to my side. I do have this metal tray on my set, which works perfect for a little palette as well. Give us a little bump of on my paper towel so I can make sure I'm not adding too much water right away. Maybe I'll even pick some of that up and add it to this green. It's in my wet spots and see what I get as a blending of color. Okay, very pretty. Let's work a little bit on those little tiny asters. I'm gonna start with that bright orange center here. Less water, because I kind of want to more control that area. Less water, more pigment, and I'm gonna do pop that in. This is the same color I'm gonna use for his beak. So I'm just gonna pop that color in for his beak. Cute. Let's pick up a little bit of that red color now and do this part of the bird. Now watercolor will travel wherever the, the paper is wet. So I'm not wanting to do that part right, the green right now, because my color would just blend right on in there. So I'm gonna give that a minute to rust and dry before I add a little bit more color. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of that darker purple color, and I'm gonna do that on his wing, and color that in. It's okay to leave some open white spots when you're doing watercolor. Um, that will be your brightest whites. Watercolor is basically like you are um, creating the shadows or you're painting the shadows. Let's put a line here to divide that tail off. Now I'm gonna pick up another color which is going to be uh, like a uh, Payne's gray color, which is kind of a really pretty navy grayish color blue. It's very, it's a beautiful color. I'm gonna pop that in on the back tail here and just let that sit, perfect. Now let's pick up a little bit of this color here, that purplish red color, and let's lay a layer of that down here. So let's put that in. I like to switch and turn my brush a little bit to create a, a little bit of varied texture by having different brush strokes. And again, it's okay to leave a little bit of white. So this is my lightest color and let that dry. Now let's come back up here and work one more time, at least one more time on these big flowers here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that orange. I'm gonna tap it in. Now I'm not trying to cover up everything I just put on because those are my light shadows or light bright highlights, I guess is what I want to say. And I'm adding this over the top and popping in that color. Now let's pick up a little bit of the red again, pop in a little bit more of that color. Um, I didn't add any more, not a lot of pigment. Okay, let's pop this in for my red and let those colors just kind of sit and blend. And we don't have to do a lot. So I'm just pushing and pulling with the tip of my brush. All right, let's let those sit. 
Now let's pick up a little bit more of that green color and let's do that top part or that little collar line of my little bird here. So here we go, or not the collar, but the head. I'm gonna pop that green in. I'm gonna to try to leave some white spots, even though it's tiny. I like having that little white spot around his eye on the outside, just to bring a little highlight into the picture. Okay, cute. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this yellowish ochre color. And this is gonna be my background color, and I'm gonna set that up here and get that ready. So I'm gonna just pop that in there. A little bit of this color off to the side. I kind of have a mixture of browns here, a little bit of rust, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, and those will all work great for creating that water picture background that will look great that way. Now let's work a little bit on his body. So I'm going to be picking a really bright kind of cheery, I'm going to wipe this out here, kind of a bright cheery orangish yellow is what I'm going to be choosing water it down to that um, consistency of tea. You wanna be able to have a nice light color to start with. And then let's lay this in to this body. Now I'm gonna leave some white spots as well. Okay, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna stop there with my first layer. Let's move a little bit up here. Let's pick a little bit, let's work a little bit more on that flowers. I'm gonna water down a little bit of that raspberry kind of color. I'm gonna water it down quite a bit. Maybe even pick up a little bit of that brighter, make my own color, <laughs> make it pretty watered down. And I'm just gonna tap in a little bit like these could be flowers, but we don't have to make them flowers. So I'm just adding that real washy and filling in kind of a, in a little bit, but I don't want to fill in everything. So I'm adding that little bits of color. Now I wanted to add a little bit more of that purplish look to these little aster flowers down here. So I'm going to pop that in. That might have been too much tint. We'll maybe wash my brush out, give it a squeeze. If it gets too dark, you can always just come in, pick that color up with that thirsty brush, spread that color out and lighten your paint. Yeah, that looks a little better. I can always go darker, but I can't go lighter, so I'm happy with that one. Let's add a little bit more green to that head of the bird. Uh, remember, we always start with light and then work our way dark, so let's lay another color in here. And those, that was my highlight color right away. A little bit too much water. Let's go ahead and pick that up again push and pull with my paintbrush. Try not to cover up everything I just laid down. Okay, let's give that a chance to dry. Let's work a little bit more on that brighter yellow of my little bird's body. So I'm back to this color. And let's add a little bit more of that color in. So let's come in here, add that next layer. I'm gonna add the darkness down here on his body. This could be a little bit lighter, like maybe that's catching the light up there. So I'm gonna be adding that darkness towards the bottom. You need to have contrast in your painting. So you need to have those darks and lights. It's important to be able to have that. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of rust color, just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna pop in just a little bit of that rust, maybe by the neckline, a little bit down here at my body. And because my colors are wet, those colors are gonna to blend together. Now, if you end up with too harsh of a line with you added your colors in, rinse your brush out, do a damp brush, not all the way squeeze dry, and then push and pull your colors a little bit and see if you can't get them to soften. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm happy with that. Great. Okay, and we're good up there. We're gonna to need to start a little bit of our background with our water picture. I'm going to go ahead and water this down fairly good because this is the first layer that's going to be on. And maybe I need to wait. Maybe I need to wait one more time. <laughs> Give that a little chance for that body to get dry because it's still pretty wet. Um, let's pick up that kind of that raspberry color again and add another layer down here. Let's darken this up just a tiny bit. I'm going to add this in so we have a nice little contrast. And again, I'm going to be working with some micron pens and pen work at the end to add in some more detail. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. I still wanna see some of that first layer. I don't wanna cover it all up. Okay, leave it there. 
All right, that looks great. That looks great. Now, while we're waiting for everything to dry, let's mix up our color here. Let's go ahead and pop some of this color in. So let's go ahead and do this lightest color here. So pop it in. Switching the direction of my brush so I have some nice texture in my painting so it doesn't look so flat. Okay, that looks good. Now let's add a little bit of that rusty color and maybe even a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. So if I put this in here, I can turn my palette the other way so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the rust here of this color, the rustiness color, and perhaps a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, a darker brown, and add that off to the side. So I can be mixing and pulling my colors at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of those colors and let's create a shadow in here because we know that this would be darker underneath here because those leaves would be casting a shadow. Let's come on this side, maybe do a little. Now we don't want the same color as that because then it would be too much the same and you wouldn't see a difference in the layering of between the bird and the pouring picture. Okay, there we go. I'm keeping, making sure that I'm still keeping some of my whites. I'm not trying to cover all those up. And again, trying not to cover everything up that I put on first, because those are my highlights in my item. That's what's going to give it a look of not being flat. Okay, I think that looks good. Looks great. Let's work a little bit on the bottom here. I just chose that bright green that I had going on. Let's maybe wipe this one out and start with that. I wanted to do a lighter, kind of a light bottom and a very light top, just to have some contrast because my my all this other picture is very bright and colorful. So let's go here and I'm gonna go across this direction just to kind of add to that feel of that. This is a table down below and the direction it would be going is horizontal. So I'm just gonna pop a layer in. I'm gonna be putting some polka dots on here. So I'm gonna be adding some interest that way as well. Okay, so there's my layer. Watercolor is always gonna dry a little bit lighter. So it's going to dry light. Now I'm gonna use that same color up here, but maybe I'll pop in just a little bit a darker green just to get it to change a little bit. So it's not the exact same color, but still I'm gonna be adding quite a bit of water. I want it to be very washy in the background. I switched up to my number 10 brush, and then now I'm gonna start here in the background. This area, I'm going to kind of move my brush in different directions. So I'm creating a uh, variant of color, a different layers of color by switching the direction of my brush. Now, this watercolor hasn't had very much time to dry. So it will, um, if you get too much water into those areas where you added before, which is kind of happening up here at the top, um, it will bleed out and it will change the color. It says it hasn't had that much time to dry. So it is kind of fragile. Now, if you get too much of that going on when you're doing it, take your paper towel that you're using and give it a dab and you can pick up some of that color. You can also add more of a, a texture with your paper towel as well if you need to. Just lowing it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's bring out my um, pens and let's do a little bit of pen work. Now this isn't too dry yet. I might want to be able to hit it with just a little bit of heat. I always suggest if you can, uh, give your paper time to dry, your painting to dry on its own. You can force it to dry though. Your paper will start to buckle a little bit. It's going to curl uh, because of the heat that you're putting on the top. And you can see it's starting to curl, curl up there and it's gonna look something like that. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna apply some heat to the back and that should get your paper to lay back down again. Okay, that should be good. Now I'm gonna be using, um, you could have it a little bit more. At the end, if your paper does really does curl and you want it, need it to be flat, uh, take it and wet the background a little bit, just lightly dampen it. Put it between some books, like a heavy thing. So like put a piece of um, 
paper on top of it, like a safe piece, piece of paper, which a watercolor paper you can put on top, dry one, put it on top, put it between your books and let it sit there for a while to get more flat. Well, let's work on our doodling. So our doodling pattern for this one I created was some circles in the middle. I'm gonna change those up a little bit. So this one's off here. I'm gonna change this one to be up a little bit higher. And perhaps this one I will put maybe right here. Those are the centers. So by changing the center direction of your flower is going to change what direction your flower um, is pointing. So now we have that part in. I'm just gonna throw a little bit, a few little speckly dots in the middle kind of what you would think of being a, maybe like a poppy center almost, where we have those little speckly dots. And then we'll create another pattern on the top. We're gonna to do a spiral like a wagon wheel. So they're gonna be closer and then spiral out this direction. Okay, fun. Let's come up here and do the same thing. These little micron pens are a permanent ink. So once they're dry, it, it should not matter if they get wet or the water on them. You do need your paper dry though to be able to, to work this pen on top of it. If your paper's wet, it does not wanna work um, at all. But once it's dry, it should be a permanent ink. Okay, really nice. Now let's go ahead and choose some of these here to make doodle flowers. And I'm just gonna do some longer stems from these. Now they don't even have to make sense, like there doesn't even have to be necessarily a circle there, but you can come in and pop in some circles over an area that you might want to count as being a flower, but it doesn't even have to necessarily make sense. You can add a little bit of like little detail where maybe they were would be the little connector pieces at the bottom just by sketching in something like that. So those that look good, let's come over here and do the same thing on the other side. Let's pop in some of these here. There doesn't even have to be any of the purple or the other color in there. And then just create your flowers on the top. You're going to just doodle them in. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of sketchiness to these leaves, loosen them up a little bit. I'm kind of following the shape, but not necessarily all the way. I'm trying to be very loose with my lines, going even past my lines that I drew. Um, that's the way I like to do things, is have that look. Here, I'm going past my leaves, but I'm still kind of in the ballpark. <laughs> let's go ahead and do something that's maybe coming out even farther. So let's pop in, do a little bit of an arch one here and do a berry that's hand drawn, but not necessarily colored in. So it's another way to add a little bit of line work. You can come in and add a little bit of these little wiggly jiggly bits of make believe type of flower. <laughs> they don't have to be real flowers. They're just fun flowers. Okay, so I can add a little bit. That's just going to loosen up my drawing, adding those little extra elements that kind of pop out. And maybe I would want to add one up here to add a little bit of wiggly biggly jip bits up here. I'm adding little kind of little balls to the end. So you want something that's going to loosen it up, give it a little bit of volume. You can also come in and create a little bit of a those little loop leaves and create another little branch of leaves without necessarily have painted them in there. Now let's come down here and work a little bit on this little bird. So I definitely want to put his little top in because that's just a whimsical look. And I'm going to create this, but again, I'm not necessarily too worried about following my lines exact. You can even double up on your lines if you would like to. Okay, let's work on his eye. I'm gonna do that dark circle around and I'm gonna come in and add another dark circle, but I wanna leave a little part. Now you could put the white part of his eye in with just uh, um, using the Uniball pen because it has a nice strong ink. You could use this one, the Uniball Signo brand. It's a really great white ink. I even like that better than the Posca pens actually. Let's do that. Come up with some leaves here. Real kind of branchy, sketchy looking like that. 
Now let's work a little bit on this. You don't even have to trace all the way. So you can do some skipping and have some open areas and not have to actually trace everything in. So loosen up your hand. If you want to give it a try, just loosen up your hand, be a little bit more free with it and not having to feel like you have to trace everything to be able to get it to be a perfect one. But if you want that look, you can. You could come in and actually trace everything or you don't have to trace anything at all and just have your watercolor. Now let's pop in a few little polka dots. I love polka dots. I'm going to do a half polka dot here. Then let's come off to the side here. Let's do and maybe do a whole polka dot. Now look across to see how your pattern might hold out. I'm going to do a half polka dot here just so I have one. And then I can kind of look to see where does it make sense to be able to put those next polka dots in. So there would be one here, one here, and perhaps one here. Now I did add a diagonal pattern, a pen work into this. It kind of repeats that similar pattern. I didn't want all of the doodling just to be up above and nothing down below. So I felt it was a good way to incorporate a few little sketch lines and just make up a little bit more of an interesting pattern by not just a solid polka dot, but a doodle polka dot, I guess you could say. Okay, I think that looks cute. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and, oh, I wanted to do a little dark line here. A few little um, tick marks to here to give this little area a tiny bit of texture. I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of stroke work here to add a little texture there. Now I'm gonna go in with my white pen, my white ink, and I'm gonna add a few little bit more tick marks with the white just to add even more texture in that center area. And here I'm going to do some movement, like it looks like it's going back this way. And maybe a little scribble bits here as well. And then you can decide if you want to add anything at the top. Let's go ahead and maybe add just a few little highlights to these little make-believe flowers. Let's pop some in there. I like to reserve white as kind of the extra sparkle. So I usually don't like to go overboard with the white because I want to keep it just a nice pop of color. So I kind of pick and choose where I want to. So it's not everywhere, but it definitely is a nice pop of color by adding that little bit of whimsicalness to it. Maybe this time I will add just a few here in the center. Try see what that looks like. Oh, I'm thinking it looks lovely. Well, that is it for how to draw this little cute, sweet little drawing. And I always say they don't look like twins. Oop, let's put that highlight back in here in his eye. I did pop it in. Let's pop that back in there just to get it to come back to life. They don't look like twins, but I said they can be related. They could be sisters, right? <laughs> Well, that is it, my friends, for today for this little draw along. I'll be back next week. I usually upload videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or I'm live on Tuesdays and Thursdays is where you'll find me on YouTube. I do have a Facebook page, too. You can go ahead and post yours underneath the photo that looks like these little drawings if you'd like to share yours, because I'm a firm believer that it doesn't have to look like mine to be good, and you have great ideas, too, and they can be shared, and you can encourage lots of other people by what you draw. And also, so if you found value in this, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I'd love to have some new subscribers and ring the bell to get notifications. Thanks everyone for joining in today and hopefully you'll come back and see me again. I've got to find that off button. <laughs> Sometimes that's one of the most trickiest parts to do. Bye now.